All right, folks, welcome to another adventure in the garage. Today, we're gonna be going over all the test settings for the Innova 3306 Alpha Digital Multimeter. Probably pick this up from your local automotive store. Um, so we're gonna be going over all of the settings, how to use them, and incorporated with that, I'm also gonna be giving you my opinion on the meter, but there's gonna be some different things that we wanna look at that can be green flags or red flags to let us know if this is actually a reliable tester for doing our testing. Now you're going to probably be using this meter in an automotive test setting. That's what it's, that's the kind of store it's sold out of, but it also does advertise household batteries and computers. Now I do have a few issues with that. I would not use this for testing your household electrical. It's, it's really not of the build quality and I just do not find it to be safe for that application. For batteries, yeah, your car battery, you can take a voltage measurement of your car battery. It's not a for sure test, but you can at least uh, check the state of charge, just not the state of health, if that makes sense. And then it does have advertise that it's it's suitable for computer applications. I'm assuming that they're meaning basically like micro electro electronics. We're gonna go ahead and put that through its paces. I wouldn't recommend household. Computers is up in the air. Batteries, yeah, that's not a big deal. Really, analog animotive circuitry, I think is gonna be the best suit for this meter. So let's go ahead and dive in. Now, the first issue that I found in unboxing this meter I always like to go through and stroll the manual. So they have this QR code on the packaging. You can scan it with your camera and it'll take you to the web address for the owner's manual for this device. However, I'll put up on the screen what my web browser took me to. So with that being the case, I am not gonna be going any further with that link. I did try to go through and find the manual through a, like a manual search on a search engine online, but that didn't yield any results to this particular meter. It gave me results to other meters. If you have the Innova 3320, I have another video on all the test settings of that along with my opinion. We're also going to do some measurements with the Fluke 115. This is just to give some like accuracy comparisons. But as far as price point comparisons, this is an Astro AI AM33D. It should be in my Amazon store. This is going to be about the same price as this. And I think for the application, it's going to be overall a way better pick. But if you've got the Innova 3320, 306 alpha and that's what you're working with and we're going to go ahead and go through all the test settings and all of its functions another thing off the bat i'm not a big fan of well let's let's start with the positives i do like this little hand strap it does say it's hands free but you got to put the hand strap on your hand and then you still have to use the leads so it does require hands, but it is small, super lightweight, compact, something you can easily throw in your glove box or something like that if you wanna check fuses. However, because the leads, the meter leads, that's the red and black portion here, on most meters, you're gonna find that they're detachable. And the reason that you want that feature is because the meter leads are a wearable item of the meter, and you'll want the chance to be able to replace them as they break down, but these ones are built into the meter, so. Not a case, but I guess that helps with the compact design. So we're gonna be going through the, the wheel clockwise off. It states that it's auto ranging and it has two separate off positions. I don't know why that is, again, because I haven't seen the, the manual. It doesn't make any sense to me. It looks like we have, we can check voltage AC, two to 600 volts, voltage DC, two to 600 volts. We can check ohms, and that's gonna be 20 mega ohms, that's what the capital M is for there, to all the way down to 200 ohms. So we're gonna check that range. I have a few different resistors here. We can check diodes, and we can check continuity. If you're not too familiar with those test settings, that's okay we're gonna break them down a little bit further so let's go ahead and get started get these leads out i don't know how long they are okay i guess they come out on the sides like that and then to help with glare i'm just gonna put a sharpie under it so that you can see the measurements a bit better so we're gonna go ahead and get started with our volts ac okay i've got an ac volt source here that we can go ahead and check now when we're checking ac power the polarity of our leads that means the red and black isn't going to matter because the current and voltage is flowing in both directions so go ahead and demonstrate that here okay we're coming back at 18.17 volts ac and you can see it doesn't matter which lead goes to where i'm still going to get the same results checking my hot and neutral to ground for that last part of the test. Let's go ahead and just compare it to another meter here. See what this one comes back with and 
Now this is a lot more expensive meter. I'm not expecting to have the same exact test results because they're in such different price points. I just wanna see what this meter is coming back with, see how close they are. Okay, I think that's close enough. That's, that's acceptable to me. The next sitting on our dial is gonna be that DC volts. And I am gonna to wanna to dip it down. See, I'm not liking that though. It's showing negative 30 millivolts. It's a small amount, but see how we move our leads around and our measurement changes. Just trying to see if I can zero out our reading. So we've gone for a DC voltage measurement. Our polarity is going to matter. So what does that mean? That means I'm gonna want my red to power and my black to common. 11.98. Let's see what happens when we reverse the polarity of our leads. See how it has a negative sign? That means the polarity is backwards. Now that should be somewhat accurate. I did take a measurement earlier. My fluke. Let's just see how that compares. Okay, so within about a tenth of a millivolt. Now for our next setting, we're gonna go ahead and check our resistive measurements or our ohms. I've got a few different values of resistors here for us to go ahead and check. Now this is supposed to be auto ranging. So the difference between, if you see a meter like this, see how it has all these different values that you can turn to. The benefit of an auto ranging meter is it's going to auto detect the value of, of whatever resistor or voltage you're trying to measure. Whereas something like this, you need to manually select, you know, your window of threshold. So like for ohms, you know, I need to be within 20K ohm, 200K ohm. This is like the resolution. I have a video on how to use this one. If you wanna go check that out. But this should be auto ranging, so it should know the value of these resistors. Polarity should not matter for a resistive measurement. So this is coming back and saying 10 ohms, 10.2. This one is coming back saying 47.3K ohms. So the K up in the right hand corner, that means kilo. If we see a capital M, that's mega, and capital K is kilo. So think of thousands. So we would carry our decimal point over three places. So one, two, three, that would be 47,300 ohms. And then it says it, it's up to 20 mega ohms. So think of millions for mega. And this is saying 1.04 mega ohms. That's what that capital M is for in the top right hand corner. Not bad and actually pretty accurate compared to the resistive measurements I took earlier to set up for testing. Let's go ahead and see. This is an auto ranging meter as well. Same 10 right on the money. 47.29 kilo ohms and 1.04 mega ohms. So this little meter came back pretty Pretty accurate, I would say. Next, we're gonna have this little symbol right here. This is for testing diodes. Can be ha handy in the in the right application. We wanna check our diodes in both directions, right? Because a diode is like a one-way check valve for electricity, we're done with. So we should have an OL. OL is gonna be over limits or open loop depending on the context of the test that you're making. So see if I put my leads together, should be showing some type of continuity and some type of reading. So for diode, we're gonna do both directions. We should have an OL in one direction, okay? And then the next direction we should have, if I remember correctly, our voltage drop. So we about have about a half a volt or 500 millivolts of voltage drop. So this diode test is good and this diode is good. Okay, next setting is gonna be continuity. And with the continuity, you'll see a little speaker and that means that the meter should produce a tone if a wire is intact. Okay, that's what this test is for. It doesn't mean that the wire is in perfect condition. It doesn't mean that there's not corrosion. It just means that there's electron flow is possible through the wire. So we should hear a tone. Now, something that we wanna look out for in a meter like this, and that can really throw you off if you're testing, hear how that tone is inconsistent? And if I 
If I mess with my test lead, I can get that tone to come on and off. That shouldn't be like that, okay? Because that's gonna throw your test results off. When you have a continuity setting for a meter, you're, you're often, when you're making continuity tests, you're not gonna be looking at your meter, you're gonna be listening for that tone for a good conductor. So that tone, if that wire is actually good and your test leads are good, See how we have a nice, strong, consistent tone? That's what we wanna look for when we have a test like that, okay? So something to look out for, this is also, you know, this other Innova meter uh, suffers the same consequence, unfortunately. That would be a case where you could simply swap out your leads on any other meter and hopefully resolve that issue. But in this case, since they're built in, you gotta work with the leads that you have. One last note that I wanted to go over for computers. What is something that we need to look for in a meter for testing sensitive electronics? We need to see the out output voltage that the meter will produce for testing. And I found something kind of interesting. I'm going to use this meter to measure the output voltage of this. And why is that important? Well, if you're trying to test something sensitive with your leads and your meter, and this is putting out too much voltage for that component, say it's a sensitive like transistor or microchip or whatever you're trying to test. If the voltage output from the meter is more than that component can handle, it can damage and fry that component. So that's what we want to be careful and look for in our test equipment. If we set it to ohms, ohms is gonna be, the meter is gonna be outputting a certain amount of voltage, looking for a certain amount of voltage drop, and that's how it's gonna calculate the amount of resistance. So I can go ahead and set this meter over here to volts DC, and we can take a measurement of the output from the meter. So about 240 millivolts, which I think in most applications is gonna be pretty safe. Again, it's gonna depend on what you're testing. Something interesting that I found though, if we set this to continuity, and we do the same thing. You're gonna notice that it's going, this meter is going to be outputting about a volt and a half for about a second. And then it's gonna register that there's not enough continuity and then it's gonna drop its output voltage back to this about 240 millivolts, if that makes sense. So we're gonna go ahead and switch this to continuity. You'll see that one and a half volts and then it's gonna drop that down. Looks like not all the way, it's still at almost 500 millivolts, 444 millivolts of output. But that's something to take into consideration when using a meter like this on sensitive electronics. Uh, you wanna make sure that output voltage is not too high. So I hope that makes sense. I hope that helps. Let me know if you all have any questions on this little Innova. Um, I can see a place for it. To me, it's personally, uh, it's priced a little too high for the quality of products. Let me know what you all think. I'll catch you on the next one.